We are going to go over some of the features of this high current relay. This is a useful tool to have as it's rated for over 100 amps, uh, in fact even quite a bit more than that in ideal conditions. We'll go ahead and flash up some of the details on that here. We're going to go through each step of the way showing you uh, what it takes to get the connector assembled and put this to use on your project. Okay, let's go in for a closer look. Uh, typical to a relay you'll see it's got two studs for your high current uh, feed in and out. That's what's being switched on and off. And you have some small pins here and a sealed connector that are going to be your low current side to trigger the relay on and off. As simple as that. Four different locations. You can see there's a connector here. This is the sealed connector. Um, and we'll go through how to crimp that. Okay, you're just going to use a typical uh, copper lug for your cables. Uh, four, six, eight gauge. I'll, I'll work with this. Ten gauge. You can put multiple on there. Uh, just a simple stud that you can stack them on. Uh, it's a six millimeter, so like a quarter inch will work well for it. A quarter inch uh, diameter on your lug. And it's a six millimeter uh, stud and nut. The connector, we'll go through how to, to terminate that. And for your low current side, for your switching, a simple positive and negative. You can switch either side and there's no polarity on this. You can switch the top or the bottom pin with power or ground just as long as the power or ground is opposite on the other side. And then here's your feed through. This is what's going to be feeding your line side and then your load. Pretty simple. We'll go ahead and, and proceed. Let's go ahead and assemble the seal part of the connector. I'm going to have to strip a little bit of wire off. We already did that. And we're going to insert the seal onto the wire. All the we, we stripped back just a little bit of shielding there, uh, just enough to get us into the terminal here. So we're going to have a double crimp here. The first crimp is going to be crimping the terminal onto the wire itself, like we've done many times in the past here. Doing our good old-fashioned W crimp. And then at this point, we're going to have to slide the, the seal up into what I call like the secondary crimp. A less critical crimp as it's not um, you know, relying on you know conducting electricity and whatnot. However, it'll be important in keeping this seal in place. So we'll go ahead and grab the, give this a tug test first. You won't be able to pull it off. It should be nice and tight. And then we'll go ahead and just kind of roll these, this crimp over here on this, uh, this seal portion. And that should be good to keep that seal in place while it's in the connector. This uh, this wire here is 16 gauge. You can use anywhere from like a 16 gauge up to a 20 gauge wire. Certainly 16 gauge isn't required. It's very low current, but uh, depending on what you have and what your application is, uh, pick what's best for you. We can now go ahead and put the wires into the connector. Let's see if we can get this figured out. So what we've got here is Got two round hole openings that it's going to slide into. And then we've got a red retainer. This will come actually open in the open position, and that will actually lock it down as soon as we get the wires in. Uh, it can easily be pulled back off for removal. However, um, it's going to need to be in this position to insert uh, the wires into the connector. So, like I said, it doesn't matter. There's no polarity on the terminals here you can use the ground you can switch the ground switch the the positive side and it doesn't matter which side you do it's just a, a coil so no real polarity there um, the part that you rolled over and crimped right here this top side of the crimp is actually going to go in the same direction as the clip of the connector so let's go ahead and see if we can slide that in see what that sounds like if we can hear a little click yep got the click there that should be good now we can go ahead and grab our other side, slide that in, click. Okay, now at this point we can go ahead and clip this down. This is a little bit tricky to get down on the first time, but you can kind of wiggle it back. You can get it, get it pushed down and it kind of latches in there. And we should be ready to give it a try inside the relay itself. Okay, we should be ready to go ahead and clip this in to the relay. Notice one neat thing about this little connector is it's got a little ear, a little tab there that actually holds this seal in place. So, uh, kind of a neat feature of this connector. Uh, let's go ahead and clip her in. Let's see here. Whoops. I didn't even put it on the right way. All right. 
Okay, clipped in, and that's that. Uh, that's ready to go. We should be able to um, use that for triggering the relay. Simple 16 to 20 gauge wire, not a big deal. Just hook one side up to a switch, and it'll turn the relay on and off. We'll go ahead and jump into the terminals you use. These are copper, copper lugs and some smaller gauge um, terminals here. Uh, nothing fancy. You can stack multiple terminals on one side to feed multiple things. You know, say you want like one four gauge line going into here, and then for your loads, you can have multiple 10 gauge wires coming out or a couple of uh, eight gauge wires or something of that nature. Once you've decided what size of a lug you're going to use, you can go ahead and put that on. And then I put the nut on, quick locking nut, will do the job. Try and get it started on there. There is a divider in here which kind of keeps you from getting anything connected or crossed over that's not supposed to be connected. If you can kind of get it started a little bit, then just go ahead and get your socket. And tighten that down. Okay, now that we've got this connected and we've got our terminals in there, it's always a good idea to test things. So for extra credit, we're going to go ahead and test this out first. This is an electromechanical relay, so we should audibly be able to hear the relay engage. So <clears throat> like I said, there shouldn't be any polarity on this, on the coil on the low current side. So we'll go ahead and give it a try, see what we can hear. And we'll go ahead and switch the polarity on it just to verify that uh, it'll work either way. Yep, works that way. Switch to polarity. Another good point is I think this this relay will fire at less than 7 volts maybe, so a simple 9 volt battery can test out many of these automotive type relays. Good little trick. Um, now let's go ahead and check and make sure that that we're actually opening the switch here and closing the switch. So here is the most basic of tools. This is the most basic of digital multimeters. We'll go ahead and set this just to check continuity. And uh, let's see here. All right, let's check and make sure we've got, yeah, we've got some continuity there. So once this switch closes, we should be able to hear the multimeter beep. Not that you really have to do this, everything should be fine, but it's never a bad idea to check any component that, you, that you're that you working with. So let's go ahead and see if this switch will close. Sure enough, it does, and obviously the other polarity, it does as well. So it looks like we have a winner. All the connections are, are solid. They seem to be working good, and we have the relay working as a switch. And that's, that's about it. That's all there is to it. Very simple electromechanical relay. High current, very useful tool.